The glint in Oscar's eye is infectious. <laughs> what is it? I ask. What are you doing? He reaches down and reveals. <laughs> in his other hand, he points the towards my face and smiling, rubs it against my lips. <laughs> I groan. Open up, he says, and laughing, I do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I feel good, Nicole. Ooh, I feel something. <laughs> <laughs> I am disgusted with myself. More importantly, I'm disgusted with the listeners who are going to think that was filthy, when in fact, it was supremely innocent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Hi, Nicole. Hi, Bill. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've missed being in the studio. I have missed it so much. It yeah. feels like I've been away from family. I know. Oh, I feel as though it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you uh, without uh, a dope uh, beat to step two, step uh, two, uh, step uh, two. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> yes. That's, that's exactly how I feel. Super. Um, but I'm glad to be back. Me too. I'm yeah. so ready. Um, friends, comrades, welcome back. A little thirst buckets. Yeah. yeah. Is that what we're calling our listeners? Thirst yes. buckets? Yes. That's what it's proven to be very popular on both Twitter and Tumblr. Okay. People like, I like it. it. Yeah, I we like call it. them thirst buckets. Yeah. And I feel like we are back to replenish the buckets. Oh, uh, look. Yes. What? Are Thank you a you. writer? Are you a writer? I'm a professional writer, sis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, welcome back, Thirst Buckets. We are back and hopefully better than ever. Yes. We want to bring you so much more good stuff. And this is the beginning of our second season. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we're we just glad to be back. I believe the technical term is a hiatus. Mm, yes, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about some of the stuff that we saw and did and thought about and fancied during this quote unquote hiatus. Yes, it was uh Call Me By Your Name, mm -hmm. the film. Yep. Black Panther. A Phantom Thread. Hey, listen. Oh my God. <laughs> there was a lot of thirst packed into those things. Yeah. We did like, you know, odds and ends here and there. We did mm -hmm. our wonderful live show. Thirst Eight Kit Live, The Quenching. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, that was a morsel from Nicole's Thirst Brain. We're very grateful. <laughs> it was the best name to call our live show. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, essentially, in those things, we found a wealth of thirst for us to kind of really get our clues into. Yeah. We had a <laughs> wonderful email back in January from somebody called Lauren. Lauren P. We're not going to give you a full name. I'm trying to, you know, put your business out there. Right. But Lauren wrote us something that we had been thinking about for a while. And then she basically expanded upon it. And here's a little line from her email, which can I just say, the subject line was, my second ticket to Last Jedi will definitely be your fault. <laughs> which I think is like the, exactly the tone you want to strike in an email to uh, hosts of a podcast right. that you allegedly love. <laughs> Just the right note of threatening, which I love. She went to see the, the, the Last Jedi and she said, I spent basically every second Oscar Isaac was on screen in The Last Jedi, enthralled by his stubble and composing odes of gratitude to his razor for doing a terrible job and mentally drafting much needed legislation forbidding him from finding a better one. Foof. Thankfully in space, no one can hear you thirst. What now, a beautiful line. Lauren, <laughs> are you a poet? Because that's beautiful. In space, no one can hear you thirst. Listen, that's actually the perfect, perfect introduction to today's thirst object, who is in fact Nicole. Oscar Isaac. Mm. Uh, Look at God. Oh, boy. Now, we wanted to do him in our first seat. <laughs> <laughs> what did we want to do? Him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to talk about... Is that what we wanted to do? Yes. All right, cool. Oscar Isaac in our first season, but, you know, we had to uh, make some changes and, you know, yeah. give us some more time with him. We thought to ourselves, how do we step up? into season two how do we step into glory mm. with season two and we thought well there's no better no more potent symbol of truly what tack is all about <laughs> than oscar isaac and talking at length about his many many wonderful attributes i just feel like his eyebrows are trying to send me a message and once i crack the code i'm in bitch Okay. I'm in. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm with you. Yeah. So I love his eyebrows mm -hmm. and everything else. But yeah. yeah, the eyebrows are truly um 
like I said, they feel like a shorthand mm -hmm. in a language that only the two of us can understand. I know this is wrong because other people feel the same way, <laughs> but I feel what I feel and I'm leaning into it. Nicole, what is the first thing that draws you to Oscar Isaac? Gosh, I am a parody of myself, but it is his <laughs> hair, his thick, curly, wavy... More it's adjectives, more just, adjectives. Just, <laughs> it's so, um, what do I want to say? Uh, I mean, his hair is like a actual living extension, I mean, uh -huh, of uh -huh. his body. What I love in that little description just then is that I... I know you were saying words, mm -hmm. but all I heard was your exhalations. <laughs> you were just kind of breathing into the mic. Like, that felt I didn't like. Even realize you were it. just like, his. Uh, his. Uh, because hair. I have this picture. I know, like, my eyes were closed as I was. <laughs> but I have this picture of his hair and just, like, mm -hmm. how it responds to your fingers in it. Sure. I'm assuming, because I've never had my hair. I was going to say. My hands and Oscar eyes. I was going to say, what a scoop. You've had your hat. No, you haven't. Listen, if I had, you know, I would have told you <laughs> <laughs> so okay so we have eyebrows and hair uh -huh. it feels like really the building blocks of man i i'm very very uh, excited to be talking about oscar isaac because mm -hmm. in addition to being such a beautiful creature mm -hmm. a, a special child of god he is also a actually stunningly wildly talented actor absolutely like he's someone who genuinely when he's on screen your eyes do not leave him Ex oh that's yes let's talk about this because i think with oscar there was an interesting way that he was introduced to the mainstream. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about that, Nicole? Yeah, for me, I didn't really know him. I didn't know his work. I had seen him in Drive, but I didn't really, like, pay attention to him. And, you know, it's right. just like, oh, there's a handsome man and kept yeah. it moving. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I get it. it. Like, life has to go on. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> until, honestly, Star Wars. Oh, um, really? I think that, you know, the internet found him. Mm. Kind of. Tumblr. I'll be even more specific. It wasn't until Tumblr, I think, found him. And, you know, you're scrolling and you see this these gifs of this beautiful man and, you know, his kind of uh, large eyes that are yes. very... Uh, so expressive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm like, oh, who is this? Mm -hmm. And then I kept seeing him, you know, popping up. And then I just kind of started to work backwards. And we've talked about this before where mm -hmm. once I fixate on somebody, I start looking back through their... And to see all of it. Yeah. yeah. And so... You could argue that many people came to us via the Chris Evans episode and then fixated upon us and then watched... I mean, went back and listened to every single episode. Yes. Uh, to which we say thank you. We appreciate every <laughs> single download. Um, but yeah, I think Oscar is one of those people who has been working for so long. He was talking about this to Gugu and Bartha Raw, who's also an actor. And he basically, did, he played like a pool boy in 1996. Mm. So that was his first like official credit. Mm -hmm. Like 1996. Like mm -hmm. these people are not new to Hollywood. Right. And yet they've been plugging away for absolute ages. And if you look on his IMDb, you really begin to see that he's been working solidly yeah. for like longer than 15 years. Let's say the 96 thing was like a fluke. Right. But he has been on screen because he was doing a lot of acting as well. He started mm -hmm. out being like a stage actor in Miami. He grew up in South Florida, mm -hmm. even though he was born in Guatemala. Um, and he, he basically has been doing these tiny, tiny roles. I mean, He's done the classic thing that I think every actor in Hollywood has done. He's done an episode of Law & Order, obviously. <laughs> um, but if you keep coming up, I think for me, the first big role that I remember seeing his face, I didn't know his name, but I remember seeing his face was in Agora, which mm. was in 2009. Mm. And then again seeing him around 2010 when he did Robin Hood. Mm. And uh, guys, I can let me, let me play you a clip of him from... Robin Hood. Yeah, because I didn't see that. I didn't yeah, see that. I mean, listen, don't rush and see it. Like, there's really, <laughs> there's very little reason for you to see this thing. It's the one with Russell Crowe. He plays uh, Prince John, mm -hmm. which is like the king's younger brother, like a wastrel younger brother. And he is in this scene with Leah Sadu, who's playing his love interest. She is the niece of the French king, blah, blah, blah. And at this point, they're both reclining. They are in a state of undress. And <laughs> they, they've clearly just finished doing it, to use the technical term. And it's my favorite technical term. <laughs> oh, God. And his mother has just walked in. His mother is like the stern-faced woman, and she has some, some stuff that she has to tell him. Now, I want to warn listeners, this is probably... I mean, I've spoken a lot about Don Cheadle's terrible Cockney accent mm. in Ocean's Eleven. This is actually also quite a bad English accent, but for very different reasons. Have a listen. Take up your lawful wife and save England. My lawful wife is as barren as a brick. Is that truly the wife you want for me? Hmm? You, 
who honored your husband with eight children, so that even now, when death has taken the rest, you have a king and the runt of the litter to call you. So, the runt. The runt of the litter. It's a terrible oh, accent. No. God bless him. He tries his hardest, but English accents can be quite difficult. And I wouldn't know because I have a perfect English accent. Of course you do. However, <laughs> for those not born to the majesty of this colonial uh, accent, it can be quite difficult and I think bless his heart he's trying and I think he's masking in a lot of kind of Shakespearean rolling of the tongue and yet it comes across as kind of like oh bless he's trying but I feel like that role for him was the beginning of seeing something that's when mm. I began to see him on Tumblr like people kind of because that it, the thing about this role is that he's super gifable in it yes he's very naked one, mm -hmm. yes and he licks his and he yes, licks his lips his, yeah yes! you know okay. all the gifts you don't yes. have seen the films but yes. you know the gifts mm -hmm. so that for me was when I began to notice him and I was like like, oh, who the fuck is that guy with the curly hair and the nice yes. lips? Because it's a good ass gif. Because the camera angle is low uh -huh. and looking up to him. And yep. He's naked mm -hmm. and he's, his hair is all kind of long and curly. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Shakespeare, a couple of summers ago, I went to see Oscar Isaac oh, um, yeah. as Hamlet <laughs> at the public theater here in New York. And my colleague and friend, Lewis Peitzman, here at BuzzFeed, he mm -hmm. decided to rechristen Oscar into, <laughs> this is the name he chose for him, Oscar Thysak. Mm. <laughs> because he spends the second half of the play playing Hamlet mm -hmm. without his trousers. So he's mm. just wearing a pair of tiny pants. Um, I say that in the British way, not the way yeah. Americans mean it. So he's in his underwear. He's wearing, in his un he's wearing underwear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh god! Uh, At one point, <laughs> Bim just she had to like swallow. She was just like, I did. I did have to swallow. I'm so sorry. Oh my god! I'm so embarrassed. But yes, I had to swallow. He basically he's wearing like they're, they're like black briefs, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, like I said, he's just walking around wearing like a full like shirt and mm -hmm. then just pants. And at one point during the thing, I, I don't think this is technically like untrue. Mm. I think we made eye contact. Oh my God. And I don't mean that in like a creepy way. I think he was just kind of like emoting yeah. to the audience yeah. and his eye caught my eye. Yeah. And I literally felt my breath catch in my throat. <laughs> like it just did. Like it just did. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> At this point, like I said, this is a, clearly a very happily, mm -hmm. you know, married man, whatever. Right. Yeah. But I thought to myself, God, I just in that moment I thought, yeah, yeah, we could we could really make it work. Yeah. <laughs> like just like I had the thought clear as day. He yeah. I mean, again, he was very good. It was it was like the, the long version of Hamlet. So we were there mm. for like hours. Mm -hmm. And it was entertaining, he was great, mm -hmm. it was very earthy and very kind of and again, he's very good at playing the you know, the Mad King. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. But also he has this thing where after, at the end of the play, I'd never wondered about Oscar Isaac. You know what I mean? Mm, like mm -hmm. I I don't like I, I got the performance, I enjoyed it, and then I felt happy walking away from it. Yeah. And I think that that is a very uh specific gift. Yeah. Where I'm clearly interested in you as a person, but also not in a way that feels creepy. I don't yeah. want to know the interiority of your life in that like minute detail. And I just like that he he exudes this thing of kind of like, no, I'm very good at my job, mm -hmm. but this is my job. Yes. So this brings us actually quite handily to another thing about, you've started mentioning, let's talk about Oscar Isaac's hair mm -hmm. and how he is one of those things that is very rare. He is ambibeardstrous. Yes. So he is hot with curly hair, mm -hmm. with shaved hair, yep. with uh, a mustache, with a beard, mm -hmm. clean shaven. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I painted him, in fact, in X-Men Apocalypse, yeah. he's blue. He's blue. And he's hot. Almost unrecognizable, but right. still, like, you know that that's him. Like, what is that skill when you are hot no matter what you look like? That's called Oscar Isaac. Hey, listen. <laughs> We're scholars of thirst, all right? Oh, my gosh. Okay, we've talked about him in Robin Hood and how difficult that was. Mm. And then there was also the film Inside Lewin Davis. Yes. Which I was drawn to uh -huh. because he's carrying around a cat. Ugh, I mean, I guess. You know, I'm a cat person. I, I literally have a tattoo of a cat Ugh. on my body. I mean, I guess I love you, but jeez. Listen. Live your life. Go okay. on. And as we all know, cats are very special. Uh -huh. They are very stingy with their affection. Unless they, you know, sedated them or something like that, it shows like, you know, this is this is a potentially gentle person who sure. can handle a cat sure. 
around a very noisy, busy. He can movie. handle a cat, you say. You know All right, what, cool. Bill? No, I'm oh asking a question. God. I asked you to clarify <laughs> the thing that you said. Whoa, why is anyone looking? Listen, I'm a journalist. I was seeking clarification. Yes. Okay. He can handle a cat. All right, cool. Nice. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> um, but the film, yes. first of all, I didn't. It's, it takes place in the 60s, but mm -hmm. it looks like it's happening right now just because 60s fashion is so mm -hmm. malleable. The aesthetic. Yeah. The aesthetic is very current. Um, and the film is not... It's one of those quiet... It's a Coen Brothers film, mm -hmm. and it's you know kind of quiet, and you're just like, what the hell is supposed to be happening? It's just one of those, mm -hmm. here's the moment in this person's life kind yeah. of film. I really loved it. I did too. I enjoyed it, but I can't necessarily strongly recommend it for people who are, well, you know. I watched it because I'm a Coen Brothers fan. Yeah. And I also really like, I like Oscar Isaac, but I thought the role itself was actually a deeply soulful role, and he mm -hmm. plays it to perfection. He's this kind of lost and slightly bewildered man who's mm -hmm. just like like you said it's a moment in a life yeah and you really kind of see how various decisions kind of lend themselves to the reality that we end up with i still think his accent it was supposed to be you know kind of a hard new york accent mm. um was a little iffy let's move on from inside lumen davis to the film that you really love him in and this mm. is also from the same year 2013 yes and it's called in secret yes tell uh, talk to me about in secret nicole <laughs> look at you already <laughs> blushing i am so into this go on again it's not a film that i can strongly recommend okay this feels like the subtitle to oscar isaac's career i can't necessarily recommend it, but he's good in it. Um, it's called In Secret, and it is based on um, Therese Rakin uh, by Emile Zola. Mm. And it is about a sexually repressed woman who has a torrid affair and ruins everybody's life. I'm in. I'm okay? in. Yeah. And it's, you know, very familiar, right? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what now? <Sorry. laughs> if you... If you have read literature oh, that I deals see. with the sexually repressed woman as written by a man, uh -huh. you know that she's going to go on and the, the consequences of her actions will yeah. ruin everybody I around I mean, her. sex equals death. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in this film, Therese is Elizabeth Olsen. Mm. Oscar plays Laurent, the man that she has the affair with. Sure, sure. And her husband is Tom Felton. Oh, uh, yeah. from Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. His, his Draco Malfoy. Yeah, okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't watch those. I movies. know you didn't. It's fine. Um, okay. In the scene that I'm going to play for you, Laurent is painting Camille, played mm -hmm. by Tom Felton. Mm -hmm. Therese is sitting in the corner being the dutiful, quiet wife. Because that's mm -hmm. another theme that's prevalent in the novel and in the movie. You have to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Don't make a sound. Be very quiet, right? So, you know, push everything down. Don't whatever. Sure. Laurent is telling the story about a deaf model that he was painting. And because he could not verbally communicate with her, he had to touch her to move her into the position. Sure thing, Laurent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. He had to touch her to move her into the positions that he wanted. One afternoon, I wanted her legs to be a bit wider. So I went to move her knees apart with my hands, but my touch was clumsy. And then, on a hunch, I touched the inside of her thigh with the tip of my brush. Where the skin is soft as cream and warm. Jesus. Wait, hold on. Lightest touch of camel's hair. <laughs> Did she make the small move you were after? She did. And what was her body saying to you? Brush me again. <laughs> Fuck off, mate. <laughs> so... <laughs> brush me again, is it? <laughs> yes. Is it? So Therese makes this gasp, right? She's so, like, turned on in this moment. Me you and know. you both, Therese, even though he's talking a pile of wank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, obvious. If this guy was at a party and was saying this shit, you'd be like, you know what, Laurent? Shut the fuck up, actually. <laughs> you baity motherfucker. Get out. Get out of my uh, house. But they begin their affair after this, and it's very sensual. It's very, like there's one moment where she's like writing his fingers, and he's like, is this what you like? Is this what you want? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And I'm like, okay, yes. Ask for what's going on. Ask how she wants it. Do it. Do we it. Love, we love a bit of consent. Yes. Um, but yeah, so like, so this is the other thing to kind of like round out this conversation is that 
Oscar keeps doing interesting movies that aren't necessarily the obvious choice for him. Right. So, obviously, we know him as Oscar Isaac, mm -hmm. but of course he was born and named Oscar Isaac Hernandez. His father is Cuban, his mother is Guatemalan, he was born in Guatemala, and they moved to America when he was an infant, and he grew up in South Florida. So, we're talking about a brown man mm -hmm. who is called Oscar with an accent over the O, mm -hmm. Isaac Hernandez, mm -hmm. who grows up interested in the arts. Essentially, he becomes a drama student in Manhattan. You know, he goes to Juilliard and he started off acting in, in Miami mm -hmm. and kind of slowly worked his way across the country into, mm -hmm. into New York and then Hollywood and so on. So it's important to note that he is a Latino man, mm -hmm. like literally born in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. It's called Oscar Isaac Hernandez. He changed his name. He gave, an, he gave a reason to um, Vogue and said, you know, there were lots of Oscar Hernandezes when he started out. It's actually mm -hmm. quite a common name. So he dropped Hernandez. But then he also said, which I thought was actually quite honest of him, he was like, also, I don't want to be typecast. Like, yeah. you know, it's difficult to kind of move out of gangster number three. Right. And yeah. in an interview that he gave to GQ, he mentioned specifically that, you know, he was basically crowned the king of the whites yeah. by Ridley Scott. And he was like, yeah, I'm OK with that. He was asked during this interview. Oh, Ridley Scott seemed to notice you very early on. In 2010, he cast you in Robin Hood. And did you feel like you'd made it then? And he said, no. He was like, not I made it, but like, fuck yeah. Also, and this is the important part of the, of the, of the quote, he says, being a Latino kid from Miami where the best you could hope for is going out for Spanish commercials and like gangster number three, which is crazy. And then to have Ridley Scott be like, yeah, you can be king of the whites. It was amazing. So king of the whites in this obviously is talking about his character in Robin Hood. But I thought also it was an interesting turn of phrase because you could argue that a lot of the characters, not all by any stretch, but a lot of the characters that Oscar has played mm -hmm. have been coded mm -hmm. as white right. and not Latino. And I think that that is an interesting thing because I remember when he kind of began to blow and people were saying stuff like, oh, he's Rita Hayworth 2.0, mm. where he's dropping the, mm. the marker of his Latino-ness mm -hmm. so that he can kind of like capitalize on, you know, wider roles. And I don't think that was like fully justified, but I also can understand people's frustrations. I mean, that's just... Uh, you know, a fact of life, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in the same way that people of color with uh, specifically specific types of names mm -hmm. have to, you know, or feel they have to feel. At least. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when they're putting in their resume instead mm -hmm. of, you know, Jose Jenkins, you got to put the J Jenkins or whatever, yeah. you know, <laughs> and send that kind of stuff out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or people who, instead of using the names that they were born with, they have to go by Lucy or, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, David mm -hmm. or something, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just, that's what happens. It is what happens. But I also think that he doesn't necessarily shy away from being a Latino man necessarily. Right. I mean, there was th there's one of my favorite clips, which is actually, he goes on a um, talk show. And this is around the time of uh, Lewin Davis. Mm -hmm. And they ask him to sing a song. And this motherfucker sings a song here let me play let me play you a little clip he's playing uh Caetano Veloso's Cucurucucu Paloma and it's from uh, the Almodovar uh, film Talk to Her mm. it's truly haunting it's a beautiful beautiful song mm -hmm. but then Oscar also sings it like I listen to that song whenever I want to cry Aww. like it's wonderful it's yeah. truly it kind of unlocks everything in you it's just this gentle oh god but 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 he sings it and I just want to play for you just a tiny clip of Oscar Isaac singing this song. Um, how does it go? It goes, uh... Dicen que por las noches no más se le iba en puro llorar. Dicen que no comía, no más se le iba en puro tomar. Juran que al mismo cielo se estremecía al oír sus llantos. Como sufría por ella, que hasta en su muerte la fue amando. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 Hey, oh listen! Oh, my God. Every time I hear that song, I mean, obviously, the original is the best, but every time I hear Oscar Isaac sing that, I just transcend out of my body. <laughs> and the video, like, he looks all soft and approachable, and I just want to eat his face. Oh, I love him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, somebody passed me a cigarette. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, you know, there is this GIF 
of Oscar Isaac licking his thumb. Mm -hmm. That's from Tiki Taki, which is a superb short film. It's such an oddball thing. <sighs> of a fi it's, it's an odd film, but it's 15 minutes. And Oscar, you should watch the whole film so you get okay. the context of yeah. him licking his fingers. Yeah. But tell me more about what okay. that gift so does to you. This is just another example of seeing these gifs of him on Tumblr and just being like, who the fuck is that? Because... That is one of my favorite thirsty gifs, okay? Seeing mm. him lick his thumb. So much so that when it was put into our Thirsty Thursday gif party, mm -hmm. I had to tweet and I said, it's filthy. I'm just warning you. Oh, God, go on. <clears throat> I'm going to read my own tweet. Oscar Isaac is one of those men who wants you to squat over his face so he oh can God. just look at it. I'm so angry. Every time I think about that tweet, I cry but not happy tears, just like frustrated, upset tears. Oh my God, but it's <laughs> so real. Like, can you imagine just being like, mm. you know, he's like, can you just stand it, here enough. over Stop. me? No, no, no. But then like, what if he sings oh my that God. song? Oh my Why God, he... I'm so upset with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, listen. Okay. Listen, I myself have tweeted lustily and thirstily about this beautiful man. Mm. And there's one GIF in particular, and it's where he is clenching his jaw. And I don't know what it is about that GIF, but it does things. It just mm -hmm. does things. What I find very interesting about him, as we've established, like not to kind of focus too much on the physical. Right. So bringing it back to his Latino heritage, mm -hmm. I think he's also one of those people who is a little bit reticent to speak to a certain experience. Yes. And I understand his reticence, but yeah. I'm also a little bit disappointed by it because yes. I'm kind of like, man, just lean in. Well, I think, I mean, I don't want to, obviously I, I can't speak for him, but I think part of that is because, you know, quite frankly, a lot of white interviewers, when they have a non-white subject, they want them to talk about diversity. How can yep. we fix diversity? How can we improve diversity? And I think he's just trying to avoid being a diversity spokesperson. Yeah. Because once you start talking about it, you get stuck in it. You never stop. You never stop. And people just keep asking the same questions over the over and over again. Instead of asking the question of the people who have the power to change things. Exactly. Right. You're exactly. right. You're right. You're um, right. But I've noticed that he's very deferential to his female co-stars. One thing that stood out to me is his relationship with the late great Carrie Fisher oh my God. and how just yeah. sweet he was um, yeah. to her and uh, talking about her mm. and also when he's in interviews with like Lupita Nyong'o or Gugu Mbatha Raw mm -hmm. how he gives such amazing eye contact yes. he's fully present when yes. talking to them yes. he's not looking around he's not playing I mean he's he can be playful he's always playful and, you know very like comfy with them but again he just gives them room to talk and Fully lets them answer the question. So that's another thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, Oscar seems to be quiet. Mm -hmm. So when he's in these, you know, they usually pair, you know, they all have like their various partners for like a tour. Mm -hmm. And for Star Wars in particular, when he was being interviewed alongside Lupita mm -hmm. and she's speaking and like, you know, everything's great. And at one point he's holding his, the doll. Yes. Yes. And he turns <laughs> and he's looking at her while she, while she speaks. Yeah. And then he also draws the head of the doll to face her while she's talking. Yes. Now, I'm not trying to give points for, like, the most basic nonsense. Exactly. But it was just a cute thing that mm -hmm. just also kind of amplified the goodness he was already doing. And mm -hmm. I've watched interviews that he's done with Laura Dern. And all the while Laura's speaking, his face, his eyes are on her face. And mm -hmm. he's kind of nodding along and kind of, you know, kind of like making sounds of agreement when mm -hmm. necessary, but not inserting himself otherwise. Yes. And I can't tell you how hot that is and how truly attractive mm -hmm. it is to kind of have somebody be in the room but not waiting for you to finish talking so they can talk. Exactly. And when um, his co-stars, his female co-stars finish talking and he's just like, oh, well, they've answered it. We can go on to the next thing. He doesn't, need, he doesn't need to like add his own little two cents or no repeat need. what they've said no just need. to say, just so he can be talking. Right. He's just like, okay, let's just move on. I find that wildly hot. And I think that's also kind of the thing that added to this mythology of him, which kind of, kind of hit like a real spot in 2016 when he became one of the unofficial but official internet boyfriend mm -hmm. it's just like it's this idea of what you project onto a man who gives just enough hints that he cares enough to not insert himself into spaces where women are doing their thing right yeah and that is again like i've pointed out multiple times incredibly incredibly hot he changes form while remaining the same and that i think is like again a mark of his truly stunning talent i i, I don't say it lightly when i say that he is 
I think he's actually one of the most exciting actors of his generation. Mm-hmm. I look at him and I want I want him to be in these roles. And you have like some thoughts about why he hasn't ascended into like full blown leading man status, but he is always you know always noticeable, often the best thing in a movie, mm-hmm. and yet isn't quite a leading man. Why do you think that is? You know, I'm I'm still not sure because mm-hmm. he has it. Maybe it's because his in, of his inability to get those accents, those <laughs> <laughs> those accents down. Um, but he just hasn't found the right project or the mm. the big big project for right, him. Right, not a tentpole kind of thing. Not you know a, he needs. A standalone, like a big, big standalone, not an ensemble. Yeah, Mm. and that's what he's been doing a lot of. Because even in those movies where he is the main, one of the main stars, like Mm. Ex Machina, Mm. which is a great movie. Mm. I would recommend that one. I would recommend that too. Um, Even though it thinks it's smarter than it is, but whatever. Yeah, but he was really good in that because we get to see him in this role that is not the internet's boyfriend, right? That he mm. is not this like, oh, you're so sweet and delicate and, and nice. He's terrible. And, and what he was awful. <laughs> and he was he had a shaved head. Yeah. And Yeah, um, with a full beard. Yes. Which is not as hot as you would think. I mean Oscar was. Yes. But everybody's an Oscar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's a really good movie. I would recommend you see that. And also I kinda wanna back up a little bit to Go talk on. about him with his female co stars mm-hmm. and also his um self-deprecation because he's very much aware that he is not the tallest man in the room. I love that. I love that. Because he was with, um, he was doing some red carpet with Gwendolyn Christie. Mm -hmm. Who's in Star Wars with him. Right. And she's a very tall woman. Yes, I believe she's six foot one. Right. She's stunning. And he might be like five eight, five nine. That's an exaggeration. He's not even that. Uh, You know, I don't know. I feel like he and I wouldn't have that much difference between us. I'm not mad at it. And they're on the red carpet, and the interviewer, of course, is, says something like, you know, is she too tall or, you know, whatever, something about their height difference. And Oscar says, I'm at the right height. I'm, I'm where I need to be or something along those lines. I can't Bitch. remember. You know, and because his <laughs> eyes are right at her boobs. <laughs> now... It, that could have been sleazy. It could have been sleazy, but you could tell they had a rapport because he instantly looked at her to make sure she was okay with what he said. Mm. And she... You know, laughed she, and she loved it, and he's made similar jokes, or you know, between them before, you know, since and all this. But again, it's just kind of like he has, he gets this really good rapport with his female co-stars, where he can joke about things like that, mm. and it's not creepy or skeezy the way it would be with someone else. Right. And speaking of his height, this is a this is a conversation that he had with John Stewart on The Daily Show mm. when he was promoting Inside uh, Lumen Davis, and. This is a great line from John Stewart, who you know, R.I.P. from TV, but not in life. Uh, let me let me let me play you this clip. Beforehand, that is a lot of talent for someone who is also my size. Mm. I feel like <laughs> I feel like a man of your talent yep. should be easily six five. You would think that, but the slight man actually has an advantage sometimes. <laughs> that's that's Thank actually you. the first thing he said to me when we first met. When we first met, that's the first thing I said. To him. I thought someone that good would be taller. <laughs> So that for me, mm. I was like self-deprecate <laughs> all over my house. Like just <laughs> that is not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I know because I'm a child of God. But what I what I love again is like this openness, this willingness to kind of just be the butt of the joke. Oscar Isaac, mm. incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. He needs to pick better films to get yeah. to that, you know, Strong the next leading level. man status, um, very self-deprecating, mm, mm. very attentive to his female co-stars. I'm so, glad that's, I'm so glad that's where you ended the sentence. Like attentive to what? <laughs> oh, right, female co-stars. Yep, sure, sure. Very attentive to his female co-stars, deferential mm. to them. Um, In a way that isn't like fake or skeevy. Exactly. What a skill. Yeah, just great rapport Mm -hmm. with them Mm -hmm. also just somebody who is empathetic and kind seeming Mm -hmm. and hopefully we will never hear about him in any drama i just really really like the idea of oscar isaac very much and i think that's something that i i hope will continue to grow because i think he's again like i've said and i keep saying it he's so talented that it drives Mm -hmm. me a little bit crazy like i look at him and i'm like how are you so good oscar isaac if you ever want to come see us invite us to your next Broadway play, whatever it is that you're doing, we'd happily accept the invitations. Yep. 
to be there to support you mm. in your curly, curly hair. Or if it's shaven, we'll come then too. Don't worry about it. Your thick eyebrows. <laughs> yep. His nose, which we didn't, didn't even we get didn't into. We didn't talk about his nose or the fact that he's not like super, super built. No. Like he's just kind of like. He, As he himself said, he's a slight he's man. He's a slight man, but I like, you know what? That's okay. I just mm. want to do some slight work. It's fine. We can make it work. I just, <laughs> I just. There's, there's a great clip which we haven't played, which maybe we'll, maybe we'll make it a little Easter egg where he talks about his bulb nose <sighs> okay we're gonna end it yes there. all right oscar <laughs> we love you come through <laughs> all right guys um it's season two episode one and we are keeping it real kind of connected with you you people love a drabble Thankfully, Nicole and I love a drabble too, mm -hmm. and Fanfic Wars has proven to be the most popular segment that we do, which, can I just say, is deeply pleasing yes. for the fanfic reader and writer in me. Yes. So I am delighted, uh, and we're bringing it back, and we're starting strong, because today's drabbles are, of course, about Oscar Isaac. And, Nicole, you have something special up your sleeve. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want anyone to get their hopes up, oh, you know. But they, just... It's too late. Their, their hopes are already up. Oh, What's that great line from that peanut butter lyric? You got high hopes like a miniskirt. Everyone's hopes are high. <laughs> Everyone's hopes are high. And I'm, I know you're not going to disappoint because you always bring it. And that's what makes Fanfic Wars for me quite painful because oh. I am sick and tired of losing to you with your fucking oh. amazing travel. So I don't know. Read it, bitch. I okay, guess. Okay. I'm going to read it, but it's, it's going to be disappointing. Oh, All shut right. up. No, 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 no. Positive mental attitude. Fine. Thank you. All right, begin. Okay. I'm ready. I'm re Here I am with my sippy cup. <laughs> begin. <clears throat> the flu had left me completely drained. Is it? Oscar's been taking care of me, bless him. But I needed to detangle the sickness from my hair. He entered the bedroom where I was leaning back against the headboard, sweating a bit, spray bottle and wide tooth comb resting crookedly in my lap. <laughs> Do you want my help? He asked putting a tray of tea and chilled orange slices on the nightstand. Bitch. I cut my eyes at him. Do you think you can? I've never had a non-black lover do more than rub my scalp to ease my day or pull my hair in passion. Would he know what to do? He gave me a look and moved me to the tufted armchair we used for reading. With careful hands, he worked the product through my hair, starting from the ends and moving up, working out any difficult spots with his fingers. Oh, my God. He hummed slightly under his breath. I felt myself drifting and joked we should make a YouTube channel. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> oh, my God, what a great line. <laughs> he kissed my too warm forehead and replied in a sing-song voice. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to our channel. <laughs> <I li> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. Please continue. Hey, guys. <clears throat> I laughed like he wanted me to, but how did he know how to do my hair? His curls aren't like mine. I pay attention to everything you do, baby, Shit. he said as he moved to another section. He kissed my forehead again, hummed softly, until my eyes stayed heavy. Bitch! Get the fuck out of my house! Get off my <laughs> land and don't come back! <laughs> Hi, guys! Hey, guys! Welcome back to our channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe! <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I didn't know that I wanted to start a YouTube channel with Oscar Isaac, but I'm I mean, saying, come on, I'm putting my bid in right can now. Can you imagine that? I can. I can imagine it quite easily. It's distressing how oh easily I can imagine. Nicole, that was a superb travel. Thank you. Truly, Thank you. truly something special. I am. What, what a bang! <laughs> what a way to bring back fanfic wars. Oh my god, wonderful. <sighs> All right, Bim. Hmm. Okay, so I have the beginning of my YouTube channel with Oscar. <laughs> oh, God. What do you have for us today? I don't have the beginning of a YouTube <laughs> channel. My hair is detangled and in crochet braids. So, <laughs> I don't know. Oscar can't detangle that. Or anything, clearly. Um, <laughs> but I have something. It actually plays a little bit. You know, he's, he's an actor. So mm -hmm. I made this Oscar Isaac an actor also as well in addition. So... <clears throat> Unfortunately, you can't subscribe to our channel, but here is my drabble uh, beginning now. I knock at the door and wait. On the other side, 
I hear shuffling, a muffled swear word, and then, finally, the door swings open. Oscar's face is creased in a smile, the full beard he has grown for this role twitching, <laughs> obscuring but somehow also enhancing his handsomeness. He glances down at the single red rose I am clutching in my hand, and his smile blooms even wider. Is that for me? I was going to throw it at your feet at the final curtain, I say, but I was too far from the stage. It would have hit some rich old white man in the third row instead. <laughs> his laugh is loud and delighted as he pulls me into his dressing room. Thank you, he says sincerely, pouring from a bottle of water into a mug before placing the rose in it. I had interrupted makeup removal, and he gets back to it, pulling his face taut under his eyes to get in the crinkles I love so much. He swipes the wet wipe across his already thick eyebrows and over what's showing of his cheeks before meeting my eyes in the mirror. Last show, he murmurs. Best show, I reply fiercely. I ask him how he feels. He looks tired, spent, but triumphant. It's been a success, this run, and in a few weeks he'll be off again in LA for another project. For now, though, we have precious downtime. Best show, I repeat turning his chair around to wrap my arms around his neck. I press my forehead to his, breath mingling and tickling our faces. Let's go home, I say. His eyes burn me as he brings his hand up to cover both of mine. Yeah, he says. Let's go home. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> that night we skipped the crest party. We had a great time at home. <laughs> So that's my travel. Um, guys, Ooh. you already know what to do. I mean, we'll put up a poll. You yeah. can vote. But it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. I love Nicole's travel. I love Nicole Ben's tolerates travel. my travel. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, we will put this up on our Twitter, which is at Thirst Aid Kit, and there'll be a poll. You can decide, do you want to start a YouTube channel with Oscar Isaac? Spoiler, yes, you do. Or <laughs> do you want to go backstage <laughs> and spend time with Oscar Isaac? Those will be your two options, and they will be up on our Twitter, literally... When you, by the time you listen to this, we'll yeah. set up a poll on Twitter. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? We both talked about foreheads. Yeah, we did. This. So what was that about? I don't mm. know. Maybe we just like foreheads. Maybe. <laughs> mm. <laughs> also, don't forget to send us your own drabbles should you wish to. Remember to keep them short. We go a little bit long. We do play a little bit what a drabble is. Yeah. But that's because we are the co-hosts of this show. So send us your very short drabbles to our email, which is thirstaidkit at buzzfeed.com. Or some people have been sending them to us via Tumblr. We are at thirstaidkitpodcast.tumblr.com. But, you know, we want to read them. You guys are deliciously filthy, very funny, and, you know, we're excited to reach even further into the filth, the filth of your thirst bucket minds. We are ready, <laughs> and we want to enter. Thirst Aid Kit is produced by us, Bim Adewumi and Nicole Perkins, TK Dutess, and Julia Furlan. Our music is by Tanya Morgan, and you can follow us on Twitter at Thirst Aid Kit. We're also on Tumblr at thirstaidkitpodcast.tumblr.com. And if you must speak to us urgently on Twitter, we are at TN Whiskey Woman, that's whiskey with an E, and Bimadu, that's B-I-M-A-D-E-W. You can leave us a message if you require the services of the Thirst Sommeliers on 765-884-4778. That's 765-8-THIRST. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We are so, so glad to be back in your ears. Remember to please head over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. It'll help other people find us and hopefully love us. And we'd also love to hear what you thought about this, our first episode of our glorious second season. So feel free to live tweet your listen using the hashtag TACPOD. You can also email us at thirstaidkit at buzzfeed.com. Stay tuned and stay thirsty. We'll be back next week. Woohoo!